to develop an athletic skill, you want to remove the distractions, to purify it, to make it as easy as possible to ingrain that skill and make it sharp. So it, it really is like coaching methodology, like athletic coaching, with a, a liberal dash of, of martial arts stuff, because it's really the same. I mean, it's like one of the things I talk about when I talk about uh, kind of the flow state or, you know, the, that zone that people talk about, is that that is no different than traditional Japanese martial arts talking about mushin or no mind. It's the same thing. It's just different labels for it. You know, all that stuff exists for a reason, right? Mm. Uh, the breath stuff in martial arts, that exists for a reason. And then you see SWAT guys now and SF guys now that have got a habit of doing what they call tactical breathing before going through the threshold. It's the same as you know, a samurai doing the breathing to calm himself before he fought. It's the same thing. It's, this is the way the body and the brain work. It's not any different with a gun as anything else. The principles are all the same. So like, what I really did was I looked at kind of like, I did a lot of research into the process of learning itself and mastery, you know, all the books on like, you know, the plastic mind and, and how you become an expert at a field of endeavor. And a lot of it just isn't done in the way we train firearms. You know, you need to have consistent, frequent, deliberate, and purposeful practice. You need to have a feedback loop so that you test yourself and realize what needs to be improved and prioritize those moving forward. You need to understand um, interleaving practice instead of block practice, how to weave those things through your session. You've got to work on the individual components in isolation without layering in the distractors. All too often, you see guys that, you know, they throw around the adage, train like you fight, which is one of the things that I absolutely hate because no, nobody really does that for anything else. Name me one top MMA fighter that does nothing but full contact sparring. Name me one. There isn't one, right? Name me one football team that does nothing but put on pads and scrimmage. There's not one. But for some reason, a lot of SWAT trainers think you should put on every piece of kit every time you shoot and make it as miserable and uncomfortable as possible. It's not that there's not a time and a place for that. There is. But that's not how you develop the skill. To develop an athletic skill, you want to remove the distractions, to purify it, to make it as easy as possible to ingrain that skill and make it sharp. Then you start layering the distractions back in and you test yourself and you see how it holds up. When it breaks, you go back and you do that again. And that process isn't typically done in institutional training for units as a general rule. Mm -hmm. And I think that's vital. I also think we misunderstand. I know plenty of guys who are serious about their training, but they only practice their shooting when their team is going to the range. And if you're training infrequently for large, long blocks of training at an infrequent basis, you're severely hindering your improvement. You know, there's so many studies that show that you know, short, frequent bouts of training are far better. Mm -hmm. And the way that applies to shooters is even if you're not going to the live fire range unless your team goes, there's dry fire. And dry fire is so misunderstood on the mm -hmm. tactical side of things. There's so much you can do. You can literally work everything except recoil management in dry fire. And guys just aren't doing that on this side of the house. But the competitors, you know, you've got top competitors dry firing every day for upwards of an hour. And just that sheer volume of repetition helps them break through to a higher level. Thanks for watching this clip of the Tactical Breakdown podcast. To get access to more interviews just like this, make sure to hit that subscribe button and that little notification bell. Or even better, come join us on the ILET network, ILET.network, where you will get access to world-leading instructors, trainers, hundreds of hours of training content designed to change the standard of law enforcement training. We'll see you there.